Welcome to our lecture online. Expressing the Schrodinger equation in the Cartesian format is not very practical when we're dealing with a spherical object. So obviously going to a spherical coordinate system is much better. So here's the Schrodinger equation formatted in spherical coordinates. And of course that's in three dimensions. And then what we need to do is we need to put into a format so that it's easier to work with mathematically. And if we realize that once we convert from x, y, z to r, theta, and rho, or r, rho, and theta, then we can realize that there's a possibility of writing the Schrodinger equation as the product of three separate equations. One that only is a function of r, one that's only a function of phi, and one that's only a function of theta. So if we do that, we, it looks as follows. First of all, what we're going to do is we're going to again replace u by what it's equal to in terms of potential energy due to the Coulomb's law, the Coulomb attraction. And then we're going to multiply the left and right side equation by r squared sine squared of theta. When we do that, here we end up with sine squared theta in the numerator. Here we end up with just a sine of theta in the numerator. And here cancels out this entirely. So the whole equation looks a whole lot simpler of course, this term here will have an additional r squared sine squared of theta, but at least the portions where we have to take the partial derivative look a whole lot simpler now. The next thing we're going to do is to take the Schrodinger equation, and instead of writing it as a single equation in terms of r theta and phi, we're going to write it as a product of three separate equations, the first one that's only a function of r, the second one that's only a function of theta, and the third one that's only a function of phi. So in other words, the equation here simply becomes r theta phi, and of course this is a function of r, a function of theta, and a function of phi. We write it like that so you can see the association. So then we're going to replace, the next thing we're going to do, oh, we're not ready yet, the next thing we're going to do is write the partial derivative with respect to r, the partial derivative with respect to theta, and the partial derivative with respect to phi in terms of the real derivative, the dr dr, the d, d theta d theta, and the d phi d phi. These are of course the functions and these are the variables. The reason why we can do that is because we assume that when the when, the, when we're dealing with the electron going around the nucleus, we can actually write it in terms of the product of those three equations. We'll show later that that's indeed true. So if we do that, notice that the wave function will now become the product of the three functions, and if we take the partial derivative of that, we only have to take the, part, the derivative of the variable that's associated with. So here becomes the derivative with respect to r, the derivative with respect to theta, and the derivative with respect to phi. Then if we take each one of those and divide it by the wave function, the product of r, theta, phi, or at least the functions, then you can see that these will cancel out and we end up with 1 over r times dr, d, uh, d, dr. We end up with 1 over theta, d, d, theta, and 1 over phi. And of course, here we have the double derivative. Where are we here? Uh, yeah, here we have the double derivative. So it's the double derivative or the second derivative of phi with respect to uh, with uh, something is not right here. This should be phi. Haha. Ha. a little error of mine. Okay. So this should be the second derivative, of course, because that's what we have over here. Now, if we do that, again, the function looks a whole lot simpler. And instead of having all these partial derivatives, we now only have the actual derivative of a single variable. And that's a lot easier to deal with later on when we do the mathematics. So now we have what we call here the Schrodinger equation in spherical coordinates simplified to a format that's a lot easier to deal with and that will allow us to find the individual functions r, theta, and phi instead of a function like, uh, like here, the Schrodinger equation that is a function of all three variables all at once, which is a whole lot more difficult to deal with. So now this equation right here is the equation we're going to be working with in spherical coordinates and this will allow us to come up with the solutions to, these differential, to this differential equation a whole lot easier. So stay tuned and we'll show you how to do that.